Oh my God, look at that. 2014 was full of big stories impacting rural America. Politics, protest, and policy making played out across the country, including discussions aimed at cutting the amount of ethanol in renewable fuel mandates. This proposal is backtracking on the accomplishments made in the past 10 years. In what was more of a rally than a hearing, dignitaries representing groups from Washington, D.C. to Main Street joined Iowa Governor Terry Branstad in January to send a message to the Environmental Protection Agency in what was called the hearing in the heartland. This year progressed with no action on the proposal to reduce the RFS, but the issue will likely play out in 2015. On this vote, the yeas are 68, the nays are 32, and the conference report is agreed to. Two years after its original deadline, the Farm Bill, a measure authorizing nearly $100 billion in annual federal spending, finally emerged from Congress. This Farm Bill contains the greatest reforms to agricultural programs in decades. 2014 included the usual weather calamities, ranging from too much rain to too little. And nowhere were the arid conditions more devastating than in California, where farmers and ranchers endured their third straight year of drought. Make no mistake, this drought is a big wake-up call and a reminder that it, uh, we do uh, depend on natural systems. It's not all just uh, going to the store and see what we can buy. Reservoirs like the Golden State's Lake McClure spent the year well below normal. During the traditional rainy season, farmers moved into prevention mode. Ripping some trees out and rationing water for other crops in an effort to survive. And water rights debates between agricultural and urban interests broke out in communities across the West. Uh, we don't like pumping out of those aquifers uh, unless we really have to. Why? Because it is a precious resource and we know uh, there's unknowns on how much exactly is out there. Oh my God, oh! In what seemed like the inevitable, the tinder dry conditions provided extra fuel to massive wildfires across the western United States. Wildfires blackened more than three million acres this year, but that's still about half of the 10-year average. Relief finally arrived in mid-December when the Pineapple Express dumped several inches of much-needed moisture. Mudslides were a side effect of the downpour and land damaged by wildfires. Midwestern producers also battled Mother Nature. Shortly after growers put this year's seeds in the ground, it rained and rained and rained. When the fields finally dried, the spigot shut off and it didn't reopen for weeks. While some yields were reduced in key corn growing states, prospects still are favorable for record corn and soybean production. We are here for one simple reason, and it is to tell President Obama to reject the Keystone XL pipeline in order to protect our land and water. One thing that escalated in 2014 was criticism of a controversial proposal to build the Keystone XL pipeline. In April, demonstrators set up camp for a six-day protest in Washington, D.C. As the Obama administration took more time to review the project, protesters at the National Mall included Native Americans who began their message on Earth Day. The encampment was organized by the Cowboy and Indian Alliance, a group of ranchers, farmers, and indigenous leaders who want President Obama not to approve the controversial proposal, and they dubbed their protest, Reject and Protect. I think this is a national security issue of the highest order, and uh, I, I'm trying to lend my voice to try to convince as many people as I can that we ought to be paying attention to energy issues writ large. The issue picked up steam in the fall as more than 7,000 concert growers descended on the small town of Neely, Nebraska to hear music legends Willie Nelson and Neil Young. The entertainers spoke in support of Bold Nebraska, a patchwork of corn husker farmers, 
urban environmentalists, and Native Americans, who circled the wagons to keep the $7 billion pipeline project in legal limbo. We have been trying to figure out what to do about the farmers and their situation for 29 years. And for 29 years, the corporations have continued to take the land away from the small family farmers. And we are going to make them squeal. <laughs> in November, Americans voted for change in the midterm elections. Republicans were the beneficiaries as the GOP took control of the U.S. Senate and increased their majority in the House. Against that backdrop, the boom in domestic energy production, most of it achieved through a controversial drilling method known as fracking, continued. And as North America moved closer to energy independence, growing global supplies of the world's most heavily traded commodity took their toll on prices. After peaking above $100 per barrel late in June, crude oil began an epic sell-off, giving up virtually half of its value by year's end. And as Americans topped off their tanks for holiday travel, motorists welcomed the lowest gasoline prices in five years. While the fall of crude is favorable for the U.S. economy, it's nothing short of devastating for others, like Russia, which depends heavily on fossil fuel for revenue. The country's currency basically collapsed late in the year as the weight of declining crude prices, Western sanctions of over Russian activities in Ukraine, and President Vladimir Putin's ban on all imports of meat, fish, fruit, vegetables, and dairy products from the West turned the ruble to rubble. Back on this side of the Arctic, America's rural economy also slowed in 2014 as commodity prices, land values, and net farm income all continue to pull back from record prices in previous years. As usual, there were winners and losers. Farmers endured the economic impact of bountiful grain and oilseed production, while livestock producers enjoyed the best of both worlds, as cattle, feeders, and hogs, at one time or another, all soared to all-time highs. And as 2014 draws to a close, the rural slowdown is expected to continue. But, as you might expect, America's farmers and ranchers are cautiously optimistic for an economic rebound in the new year. For Market to Market, I'm Paul Yeager.